Good evening. I would like to welcome everybody here to the meeting of the Finance Committee, March 18th, 2024. And I'm going to call it to order at this point and roll call. Um, Vice Chair Anthony Maddox. Present. Member Janine Boyd um, is on her way. And I'm Gail Larson, Chair of the Committee. We also have the honor of having President Akuda and Councillor Petrus here, and also um, our Director Schuster from Finance and City Administrator Williams. So I would like to ask if it's okay with you, Director Schuster, I have a few questions that I laid out in response to this legislation that we're looking at tonight. We're looking at this to see what effect it has on your department. Okay. So um, if that's okay with you, I'm going to proceed with my questions and then we'll let other people chime in or you can uh, let us know if you have concerns as well. Because okay. we have the legislation to look at. Um, I want to know if the computer, based on what we're requiring via this legislation, if the department has computer software in place that will allow the city to receive registry fees, excise ta tax payments from the short-term rental operators online. Is that already something that exists? Not in the finance department, no, it does not. How do, when they pay, when people pay their fees through the portal, does that come from a different department or? That's the utility, yeah. I think we pay the utilities online. Yeah. So that's the utilities department. And I'm really not sure about the planning and um, department if they do the permits, but I thought most of them come in and they have their own software, just like utilities has their own software that's hooked to the finance software. So you, the information goes into the bank from there and you get a posting? Yes. To make a journal entry? Right. Okay. Does that concern you that you don't have something in place or do you think that what's already in place could be used for the same purpose, like housing and building or planning development? So I've never been like on the planning software, so I couldn't say how that would work or how it, if we could use that for the taxes. I know our new world system, the finance system, would not be set up to do like tax forms and take in the payments like that. Okay. That's kind of concerning. It's like, how would we, would it be appropriate to talk to Director Zamft about how they collect? And that, well, it sounds to me, and tell me if I'm wrong, that there there is a process, it's just between two different departments who process. Right, and it interfaces to the finance department, so hit the GL. So we get all the bank stuff and they give us a report and we balance it out. Okay. Which is typical. It effort. is typical, yeah. yeah. So that's probably going to be where that yeah. process would take place. It's going to say it sounds like it'll touch more multiple departments in terms of processing something like this. One to actually do those payments and do the reporting, and then she'd have to pull it over. So it would, yeah, it would affect at least two departments. It sounds like. And in order. Yes, it all depends because like if it's the tax portion where you're going to make them fill out tax forms and stuff, that would not be planning. We would need something right. in place because they wouldn't. Right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I also have the question, does the department's chart of, does our department chart of accounts give you the flexibility to have the excise tax payment posted to a, set, a revenue account where we could see how much money's coming in? Yes. Because it would be nice to be able to see that. Yeah. <clears throat> and the administrator is defined in section 161.02 as the director of finance or his or her authorized representative. Does your department have the staffing capacity to administer the collection of the taxes, the refunds, and et cetera, as enumerated in this legislation? So <clears throat> I don't think I could answer that without knowing yeah. how many like properties this affects, how many we're going to do. Like if it's like three to five you know, that could be handled. But if we're talking anywhere between 25 to 50, I would have to really look at that. Because are we going to make, with these tax returns, are you going to collect them once a month? Are you going to do it every quarter? So it would all depend. I think the legislation calls for it. monthly collection and then quarterly reporting. Okay. Oh, you were for me. I, I just, just wanted to clarify something in terms of so we're, we've been talking about operations, 
um, and the processes for that. Enforcement would also be a portion of this, and that, that wouldn't touch your department. That would, again, touch another department. Any, any issues coming in and processing those, you finance wouldn't have anything to do with that portion, correct? So I think there's like two different parts is what I can understand of all this is the enforcement on like the fees for not filing correctly, or that would be the finance department, but like on the property itself, that would be planning. planning. Yes. Okay, so yeah, that would touch, okay. It Thank would you. touch both. Trying to pull it up here, but um, something that you said just caught my attention. So you mentioned um, the director of finance or their designee. So I apologize for not having that section in front of me. But in essence, that was one thing that caught my attention. Would it be better for us to like name like the city administrator or their designee so that the city administrator could name the director of finance? But let's say that the director of finance isn't you know, able to fill that role at that time, then it might be more difficult for the city administrator to do that role or assign it to someone else. So in essence, should we consider like bumping it up a level so that there's more flexibility in the event that they're not available to perform their duties? I don't know, just one consideration. That was something that came to mind. It does make sense to me when we talk about the fact there are several departments that will be involved in this process. If there was somebody so that the, admin, the finance department isn't solely responsible for they, they will be responsible for their portion, yes, but in terms of how it's all flowing and if everybody's, you know, efficient in what's being done and the enforcement's happening, perhaps it might be better if we named the city administrator. Or the mayor. Or the mayor, yeah. Or their designee, right? Yeah. Or their designee. So that they have the flexibility to decide. Just one thought. Seems like a good amendment to make. Well, it would be uh, consistent with the rest of the legislation because that's more or less what it says about all the other portions that are not related to um, the collection of fees. And uh, according to Law Director Hanna, he said this is very standard in legislation of this kind. Sorry for clarification, what, what is standard? Um, it's, you know, having the mayor or his, okay. or his or her designate you know, that language in, in this type of legislation. So do you have, what are your concerns as you looked at this information? Because there's a lot on your department. Yes. So when I was reading the definition, it's on the one page, it says hotel by the definition. Um, I think in our ordinance, the hotel is defined somewhere else as like a building. So... I know this is the, the small rental registration. Like if you put the hotel, short term, short term um, if you put the hotel in that and it's defined somewhere else as like a business, is that gonna be a problem? I, I think defining what a hotel is in this was just for the purpose of separating that from what a short term rental is. Okay, because my thing, like when we do this and like, if I had a, a house or and I was running out of room, mm -hmm. if they register with the city, I want to make sure that gets um, to the RITA agency, the tax collection agency, because they're earning income in our city, which means city income tax would have to be applied. So then we would have to turn it over to RITA too to make sure that they're getting their tax forms too. And we're getting our 2.5%. So I didn't know if when you put that hotel up that like mm -hmm. limits see you know what the thoughts were there i don't because that's not part of the the definition portion of that was something done by legal and that would have to be explained by them i would say because in essence these vendors or operators are operating and this is income coming into them mm -hmm. yeah so how does rita treat something like that not a hotel but the, the short-term rental it's just like a landlord, a rental. Okay, so. But if they don't know about it, then they can't monitor it. Okay. Too. And look at the individual property owners to make sure that they have that additional revenue from the income coming into them. Okay. So that's a separate entity from personal income tax then? Yeah, because usually when they, if you would register for this, then we have a, a person at Rita that we would turn in the forms to and make sure that they're going to tag these 
owners, landlords, whatever you want to call them, to make sure that we're going to get the income tax on it too. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Uh, my concern is the capacity for the finance department to handle the collection of the taxes, and especially in our current situation, it's very difficult. It would, I would not, I would expect this isn't going to take place until, if we do pass legislation until, would we say August? Well, it depends on when it comes forward, but, right. but I wanted to give at least five months. Yeah. And that's from the time it was passed to the time it was enacted for uh, actually a few reasons. One is um, forms have to be created. Mm -hmm. The second reason is, is that I think you, you have to give um, a kind of uh, communication to the landlords and the uh, and I think uh, the short-term rental companies um, that were doing this and that you know the rules are uh, you know what rules are going to be applied, especially the ones where that have to do with posting um, uh, rental occupancy and so forth in the uh, in the dwelling. And um, you know there might have been one or two others, but certainly this this is not kind of legislation that you would enact, you know, in 30 days. Okay. Sure, I'm sorry. I, I, I think because I, I'm seeing a capacity of systems and a staffing issue with this in terms of how we're, how we're going to fund it, how we're going to move through, but also I think the impact on residents who have been doing these short-term rentals for a while now. And I, I think we're at a stage just based on what I'm hearing where we, we would absolutely need some public uh, feedback at this point. I think we need a, some type of public hearing on this. Uh, from the people who are going to be impacted financially by this, by this, by this process, I think I, I'm just, just, just based on what she's stating. I know there are some folks who are going to hear this and be a little taken back by yes. that process, especially mm -hmm. going through reading. I just think getting feedback from our current <coughs> landlords and people who are doing this process, I think, would be important. At this, point. It, this is this is going to financially impact the city in terms of how we build the processes, but also impact every resident who's currently doing this, who's thinking yeah. about it. I agree. I think that's really important. And I would expect that might fall under your committee to do a public hearing. Actually. Oh. And, and I would just say that, uh, that this was not, the 3% tax was not in my original legislation. Uh, I spoke with Director Zianth. He thought it was um, something that was important to add. I, I suppose, you know, the, you know, my rationale for for adding it was, you know, again, it wasn't in my original legislation was is that, you know, whenever you give the department something more to do, you know, it, it, it has a cumulative effect on uh, the budget for the department that's handling it. And, you know, this could help offset it. I mean, that was. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so I, I know we've got a lot of questions. Um, I don't know, I, I, I just came in, so I don't know what the conversation has been thus far, uh, but I know I've got some questions that, that I would love to, to, to know about. I'm wondering if any analysis was done uh, about other jurisdictions that have imposed an excise tax and what revenue they saw from that excise tax. I have not done that. I have not done that. I know when, when, I, when I proposed that, initial draft legislation that I sent over at the beginning of November, I think it was, or end of October, um, it had an excise tax in it. And I think that's to achieve the goals of when, when people are engaged in uh, commercial activity in the city, um, whether it's a hotel that we currently don't really allow anywhere in the city, or in this case, moving forward with hotel-esque accommodations um, in short-term rentals, that there would be some sort of excise tax to create some kind of parity and also to allow some funding of the government by that commercial activity that's taking place. Um, we hadn't gotten it. I, I wasn't ready to introduce anything at that point. I wanted to spend some more time before introduction working with council members sure. and the departments to, to flesh it out a bit more. Um, 
And so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this process, even though sort of the introduction occurred and now it's been changed a bit as a result of taking a look at that draft, um, we can we can have more of that kind of discussion mm -hmm. and see sort of what we should expect mm -hmm. based on the experiences of other jurisdictions. So that might be something that council might want to do is take a look at other jurisdictions and sort of get an, an analysis of what their revenue picture looked like once they imposed this tax on, on the, uh, the operators. And then additionally, um, I would suggest that council members take a look at how those jurisdictions uh, interact with and partner with the hosting platforms as well. That might be something that council members might want to uh, give, give Cincinnati a call, see what their relationship is. Um, and then maybe bring that back and that can help inform this discussion a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we don't, I mean, we, it's my responsibility, I think, to minimize the administrative burden and maximize the benefit to the community. Um, we don't want to just heap work on departments for very little benefit. Um, but also, and I think to, to Councilman Maddox's point, the people who are relying on this for supplemental income, during a time where things cost more, frankly. And, you know, people aren't necessarily getting raises. Um, they may want to supplement their income in order to stay afloat <coughs> even. Um, placing more administrative burden on them in order to legally do this. Mm -hmm. And financial burden. Uh, you know, we think of the, the example of the person who owns um, 20 properties and they might be airbnb some portion of those properties. That person is not who I'm thinking of in this moment, but the person who owns, you know, a duplex or a person who owns, you know, their, their home in Cleveland Heights, but they own another couple properties because, you know, their parents and their, you know, in-laws, you know, passed them on. And so they've got these two rental properties and when they don't have a long-term tenant, how do they make ends meet mm -hmm. until they get a new long-term tenant? Those sorts of things. We want to minimize the administrative and financial burden on them while also achieving the goals that the government uh, needs as well. So I, I, I appreciate you having this conversation about the excise tax. I think it might be helpful to do an analysis mm -hmm. and then come back and see what that might mean extrapolated for Cleveland Heights population. Did you, did you ever find out how many registered vendors there were in Cincinnati that were involved with the short-term rentals? Do you remember a figure of numbers? I don't remember seeing that. Okay. Would they, um, Cincinnati, was there anybody else that you talked to? But, but they'll have that. Yeah, I did speak with North Royalton and North um, and Rocky River. Okay. Um, yeah, I spoke with the person in the case of uh, North Royalton, it was the, their housing building and housing department. And I actually spoke to the director and he's, he, you know, he, he thought it had very little effect. I mean, on the rent, you know, on the people doing the renting. Yeah. I, I would hope, I mean, this, the tax portion of this is on the, is, is on the, uh, the renter, not on the, on the landlord, um, so it should have no effect on on the landlords. But um, but you know, yeah, I don't I don't know uh, how many. But I will tell you this: Cincinnati, they all have records now because they use they all use separate forms, so they all know how many uh, short term rentals they have. So we can get that data. We can get that. Go ahead. I, I just want to briefly say that I, I just disagree with one statement there that any, any I think landlords are concerned if the people who are renting from them are seeing an increase in a rate it will absolutely affect their business anything that is taxed on either a business or a customer is going to affect that business flow and going to affect their profit margin their impact um, it, it, it could be the difference between I'm going to rent this home in South Euclid or this home in Cleveland Heights on Airbnb based on that. So absolutely, it'll have a financial impact on both sides uh, because the, you're going to see that increase. I, I, don't, I think that's unavoidable. No, it could. Um, I was just I just wanted it to be clear that, you know, where the tax was, you know, who the tax was on. 
because I, I don't think we had actually said that. Mayor, did you have some questions? So I, I guess I think it's it's helpful to know um, that there's still you know some potential avenues for for council achieving sort of a little bit more of a, a base of information on this stuff, um, and and I look forward to to hearing more about that. Um, and that'll, I think, inform the finance director's, you know, position and ability to to manage these sorts of things. Um, you know, functionally, council can impose new taxes on the residents of Cleveland Heights, businesses in Cleveland Heights, um, and and this is one of the examples of that. Um, and and so I think you know that there are some some other like the fees i think as well the registration fees and the potential for that um may also be a subject that the finance committee may or may not want to take a look at as well and that might be something that we want to take a look at in other jurisdictions too just to get a, a framework and a forecast for how that might impact um our budget and and of course that would be offset by whatever additional support we might need in finance in order to maintain mm -hmm. that sort of management. That was really my goal today was just to make sure that Director Schuster knew that, and you knew that there are, there's a large section of this legislation that refers to the finance mm -hmm. department and depends on them for keeping accurate records and also depends also on the operators themselves keeping accurate records and, um, so there's some education that sh will have to occur beforehand and help with filling out forms and submitting taxes. Um, so it, it, we have time, I think. Your next meeting is on the 2nd, Second, I believe, April of April. 2nd. Yeah. And um, I can try to get some data before then. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not even going to ask committee today if we are ready to move it forward because we're not. We we need to collect more information. So, if yeah. I could, so am I understanding correctly? So, Council President Kuda, <clears throat> this was not originally included in your drafted yeah. legislation. So you folded it in after it was in the document that the mayor passed along. Is that right? Correct. So I guess if if I could ask the mayor, do you happen to have any data or information that you would like for council to take into consideration for reasons why? it should be included because it sounds like council would be fine with it not being included, but decided to include it only after it was suggested that it be included. Well, well let me say this. If we, if, <laughs> I mean, I, I did not see it necessary to be in the original, um, in my original um, legislation, but um, I don't want to preempt. Let's, let's do the, our due diligence on this. Sure. But I can tell you right now, if this turns out to be, after we look into it, more trouble than it's worth or, you know, more of a burden than it's worth, yeah. um, you know, this, again, was not something that I would have initiated. Well, I didn't initiate it. And, um, and you know, it's something that I would consider removing if, if that's where the, the information took us. If I might also answer that sure. question. Okay, so again, as I as I indicated earlier and then previous meetings as well, what I passed around was an initial draft. It was a draft intended for continued development with council members and with the departments. So this wasn't by any means a done product. I mean, we, we weren't complete. Um, so the the model that we used was Cincinnati. And Cincinnati imposed an excise tax because they wanted to raise revenue from that commercial activity, which is the reason why you impose a tax on things. Um, it also has a side effect, potentially, of uh, sort of reducing the appeal of participating in that commercial activity as a result of the taxation. Taxation tends to uh, decrease the type of uh, activity that you're taxing. Um, and so, you know, Cincinnati's model was our base model, but our intention was to work with council members because I knew that uh, Councilman Kuda had been looking into this, um, this particular topic area. So I invited Councilman Kuda to work with me and work with the departments in order to craft something before it was introduced. Um, so the, the conversation that we're having now, 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 Councilman Kuda determined that he was going to introduce a piece of legislation without 
using that as sort of a springboard or, or a collaborative um, opportunity, and that's fine. Um, in this case, if Councilman Kuda took a look at that and included some of the facets from that draft, that's fine as well. It's just now we're having this conversation through the committee structure, as opposed to having it before something was introduced. And if that's how council wants to do it, that's fine too. It just means that we have to answer these questions in this setting, as opposed to in a different setting. If I could, Go ahead. Mr. Mayor, do you happen to have a policy preference in this regard, or would you, would that depend upon whatever data is collected regarding those questions that you brought up earlier? Yeah, yeah, I follow the data. So I'm interested okay. in, you know, conceptually, I think it makes sense that when a commercial activity like this <clears throat> is happening in our community, and right now it's not allowed, right now we don't have the, the actual legal allowance for this kind of commercial activity to happen here. Um, and so in order to bring the residents of Cleveland Heights into um, compliance with the law in Cleveland Heights, we can either basically come down really hard on enforcement, which in this particular case is extremely difficult, um, or we can modify our existing rules in order to be in line with how we actually behave in this modern era. Um, and so our thought was, and, and, and Councilman Kuda's thought was to adjust our rules so that we are in line with how we are operating to some degree, providing some reasonable restrictions and regulations so that the city can have some sort of eye on this commercial activity that's taking place here and some sort of um, understanding of and management of the potential ne negative ramifications of that commercial activity. Um, I think that an excise tax on that particular commercial activity on first glance makes a great deal of sense because what we want to do is uh, first impose the tax so that we can use the revenue in ways that make our community better. Um, but then second, that also does provide a particular hook into who's renting, how much are they renting, and we can develop a great deal of data around that too. So conceptually and on its face, I think an excise ta tax makes a great deal of sense but it goes back to the details. And that's why I wanted to have more of this conversation before introduction so that we could all work through these things. And so like when something gets introduced, it's almost like there's a clock running. You know, people expect something to happen within some period of time. Um, but a lot of that prep work uh, can and often should take place before introduction. Um, since it's been introduced, I, I, I'm not advocating for a removal of the excise tax, but I do think that we should fully flesh out these issues and get some data and get some comps and sort of have an understanding about what we will actually be doing to Cleveland Heights if council passes it. Am I understanding correctly that this sort of tax can be used for only certain purposes, revenue from this tax? No. It would go into the general fund. Go ahead. I, I just want to bring back, circle back around, because more I'm hearing this. I know we're, we need to take a look at the data and then make any edits. Um, I, I don't chair any committee that touches this at this point, but I, I'm very interested since I'm on both housing and finance of what, what kind of temperature we are in terms of any type of community feedback on this and a hearing after. Um, I, the more we're talking about this, I can just I can see the emails coming through and some questions about in terms of impact. So I'd like to get ahead of that in any way we can in terms of letting the public know that they'll have an opportunity to kind of weigh in on something like this that's going to impact. But I don't I don't know. I know I, it's, it's uh, President Kuda's legislation, and I know we have our housing chair. So I, I didn't know if that's something that we would do in, in finance after or, or anywhere. But I'm I'm definitely open to it. But. I mean, I'm fine with that. We we actually vetted this a lot last year, but not in this, with this current, we don't even know what the current form is actually. In, in this moment, we don't. So, so I think a, a re-vetting would be in order, you know, no question. Um, so let's, you know, let's, you know, I think we know what to do now, so. I will commit to getting some data done, collected before we next gather and I would try to have it done before that housing and building committee meeting so we can talk about that then and we can talk about a public hearing, which could be a joint public hearing actually. Mm -hmm. 
right? Yeah. yeah. We'll just share the chair. You know, <laughs> <clears throat> I, I would like, like the record to show that Councilwoman Boyd has arrived. Thank you. Thank and you. Sorry. Councilor Petrus. Yes. So I remembered back to um, an Ohio Municipal League event that I recently went to. They happened to talk about hotel tax. Mm -hmm. And looking back through my notes, I um, wrote down that a hotel tax, a 3% hotel tax, the revenue generated from that can only be used for economic development purposes. Is there a way that we could verify that we are able to just put it into the general fund or if there's some sort of special purpose that it has to be used for. I'm not sure if that's something that Director Hanna would get into. Did they say it was revised Ohio, Ohio revised code or something? Um, I could try to do some research. I'm happy to do it, Councillor Petrus, but um, kind of like a source to go to. That's very restrictive. Although we have lots of development going on. So, so looking at the go ahead. Looking, I just opened up the Ohio Revised Coast and it says that that all the revenue from the increase in rate shall be used by the municipal corporation for economic development and tourism related purposes. So I can send this over. Okay. Um, Municipal Corporation's ordinance of resolution that levies an excise tax on transactions by which lodging by a hotel is or is to be furnished to transient guests to provide for the following, that the revenue from the increase in rate shall be used by the Municipal Corporation for Economic Development. Will you include Director Schuster on that as well? For sure, yes. Yeah. How does... Does that make sense to you that we would have to be that restrictive in the year we talk like that? Well, th this is this is funny because I'm, I'm going back now to when I was formulating this and I was working mostly with Assistant Director, Law Director, uh, Lori Wagner, and we went through this. That, that citing that uh, Councilman Petrus just brought up and some other possibilities, and she had advised, she, Assistant Director, <coughs> I'm sorry, lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, she says, no, this is, this is uh, messy. <laughs> you know, and that was why uh, I didn't put it in. But, you know, listen, we, we, we would be revetting this anyway, yeah. regardless. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Well, I'll see what I can pull up and gather. And um, if you've come across anything as well. Um, Councillor Boyd, do you have anything to add to the conversation? And I apologize, and I'm catching up. So it's all right. I'll email you if I come up with some stuff. I right. need to review the what I missed the first part of the yeah. meeting. And That'd be great if you could do. Yeah, that. I, I know you're pressed, but yeah. <laughs> Just as, as a sort of a adding a bit of color, it, it is important to note that we are not imposing a hotel excess tax. And in fact, I, I think it, it it makes it very clear that this is, is distinguished from hotels. Um, and in part, that's for some practical reasons, mm -hmm. I believe, uh, and I, I, I don't want to speak for the sponsor, but there are some practical reasons that, you know, if we were to focus on hotels and class um, Airbnbs or short-term rentals generally as hotels, there would be additional restrictions and requirements that our homeowners uh, would be forced to modify their homes in certain ways. Um, things like entrances and exits, yeah. things like sprinkler systems, mm -hmm. thing, you know, all of those things mm -hmm. that hotels are required to yeah. do. Um, which is why, certainly in, in my draft, and I know in this in this piece, it, it does not class short-term rentals as hotels, but instead creates sort of a separate, specific class mm -hmm. of properties and sure. property uses. This, it also allows us to not have to Go through the process of making zoning amendments that would, would extend this as well. But if, if the council wants to take a look at, at treating these like hotels, the council certainly can can look into that as well. It seems to me that's why they define what a hotel is versus a short exactly. term rental. Is. Exactly. So the legislation and, is. And I would just add that uh, you know we are in the process right now, um, not with this committee, obviously, but. 
of uh, looking at several of uh, trying to, well, the, the, I don't know if I call this irony, it's more, more of a coincidence, you know, that the mayor and I both used, not, not having spoken about it, but both had uh, gravitated towards the Cincinnati model, which if you look at a lot of models, it, it, theirs really does jump out. But um, we are in the process right now of uh, trying to comport this legislation, my legislation, with our current ordinances. And then there's also a few policy decisions. So th this is kind of all going on simultaneously. I'm sure that, you know, once this work done, and, you know, you do a little research on the finance end, um, we'll, we'll figure out something that works. Okay, thank you. Anybody else say, want, have anything to contribute? Okay. Councilor Boyd. I did want to suggest um, connecting whoever is the best person to connect with the government affairs folks for um, Ohio Hospitality Association. So they work a lot with hotels and Airbnbs and all those things. The um, government affairs person, her, na her name is Michael. Not. <laughs> um, but she's a good friend, and I'm happy to connect, you know, whomever to, because I think she's a she's a wealth of information. She's been doing it a long time in Columbus. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're good. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn this meeting at 5:37. And thank you all for coming today. Thank you so much. Thank you.